Hey everyone, Anton here from the Huntress Sock Tactical Response Team coming at you with an incident that is kind of interesting. So if we look at the signals that the analyst received uh, for this incident when it first kind of kicked off, at first glance, they seem kind of bread and butter. So if you've ever read like a DFIR report, a uh, threat report or any kind of, uh, or our own Huntress threat report out there, you'll see that these commands are kind of standard, right? When a threat actor lands in the environment, they want to get situational awareness, right? They want to see what they're dealing with. They want to see if trusts exist in the environment. They want to see who's the member of the domain administrators group, et cetera, so they can actually go ahead and target those users. So this series of signals is, is pretty standard, right? We, we see this thing quite a bit. And if we take a look at the process tree for one of these signals, so if we take a look at the process tree, for example, for the trusts uh, command here, the, the tree looks uh, normal, right? So, so there's no weird executable that's spawning this command. There's no weird program that's spawning it. There's no evidence of exploitation here. So at this point, we could kind of assume that this enumeration command came from, from the host and it came from some kind of authentication mechanism, either through a brute force or a VPN compromise or something like that. We are not seeing evidence of exploitation. We're not really seeing evidence of any kind of like crazy C2 payload or anything like that. And we could actually look at another instance here of another enumeration command here. And we kind of see the same parameter, right? Like this command line looks fairly normal. Net is spawning from Explorer. That This is normal in Windows. So here we could ascertain that there is malicious activity happening on the host. However, the malicious activity isn't necessarily stemming from an exploit or a payload or something like that. So at this point, the next thing that we could look at is the event logs, right? Our trusted event logs that show us uh, what's happening. And when we looked at these event logs, the initial access point from this intrusion kind of shook out. So it presented itself. And we discovered that this particular host was exposing RDP to the internet. RDP is the remote desktop protocol. So if a user wants graphical access to an endpoint, remotely. RDP is a great tool for that. RDP is super convenient for users. However, if RDP is exposed to the internet, and if that RDP service doesn't have MFA enabled on it, then threat actors will actually brute force that RDP service. And unfortunately, in this case, the threat actor actually had success and was able to successfully brute force the environment, authenticate via RDP, and then run those commands. This is why when we were looking at the process tree earlier for, for those commands, it seemed normal. There, there was no signs of exploitation. Uh, there was no signs of a, of a C2 payload being used or anything like that. So this is a case of your kind of standard credential theft, right? Or so it seems. Because when we actually took a closer look at the endpoint, we saw a few interesting things. The first kind of interesting thing that we saw was that the endpoint was actually compromised from multiple IP addresses. And this is not strictly uncommon. We do see this a little bit, but it is a little bit rare. Typically, we see an endpoint being compromised from one IP uh, on one day, where in this case, it looked like this was a case of historical compromise. Uh, so this video is being recorded in March, and this happened sometime towards the end of February. When we took another closer look at some forensic artifacts on the host as well, what we kind of saw was that the threat actor, when they landed on the host, they were actually pretty hungry for credentials. And this dynamic is really interesting because we see a lot of credential kind of access and credential dumping techniques here at Huntress. But in this case, the threat actor was actually manually searching for files that had the word or keyword password in them. So our working theory here and our kind of hypothesis was that this was an initial access broker. And within the kind of ransomware ecosystem, these initial access brokers will breach networks, look for credentials, and then will sell those credentials to other parties so that they don't have to worry about the hard task of actually breaking into your network. They already have those credentials provided to them via the initial access broker. So this case is interesting because it started out, as, as I covered earlier, with your kind of vanilla standard bread and butter enumeration commands. However, when we looked closer into it, this was not your really standard intrusion. This was actually, at least we think, an initial access broker that was kind of looking at the send point and pulling credentials out of it so that they could actually sell those credentials further downstream and further facilitate ransomware access. 
So an interesting uh, case, if you're interested to in the IP addresses here, we do have a blog that does a little bit of a deeper dive into this case and kind of goes into the infrastructure that we unraveled when we started poking at these IPs a little bit harder. But again, a really interesting example of how simple, or at least a quote unquote, you know, what we think is a simple brute force attack can lead to something more and a good kind of lesson to maybe not give up when you're doing investigations to always dig further, always take a look at that little shred of evidence that you see and pull on that thread because as we see in this case what starts off as what you may think is a regular simple bread and butter kind of brute force turns out to be something much more interesting and a little bit more nefarious than we originally thought a really interesting case i uh, hope everyone enjoyed the video and i'll see everyone in the next one cheers